The 3M case is really sterling an example of how you can have a local operation collude and circumvent controls and the need for some kind of auditing or testing of these kinds of expenditures to make sure that they're proper. Global companies face unprecedented risks and challenges in today's economy. To mitigate these legal and economic risks, companies are rapidly embracing and elevating the importance of robust ethics and compliance programs to promote positive corporate citizenship. On Corruption, Crime, and Compliance, you'll hear from industry leaders and insiders about how to create effective ethics and compliance programs that will mitigate risks and maximize financial performance. Here's your host, Michael Volkov. Hello, everyone. Mike Volkov here. We're here to talk about the 3M Corp. $6 million FCPA settlement with the SEC. You know, this year has been slow on FCPA, surprisingly so. Not so much from the SEC perspective, but we really only had one DOJ enforcement action, that being the Corfico Colombiana case, which we talked about in prior episodes. The SEC, on the other hand, is having a relatively good year. The last quarter, I think, will be big for both of them. I do think we'll see some DOJ cases come out before the end of 2023. So the SEC's recent settlement with 3M for $6.5 million is its seventh corporate resolution for the year. Like I said, DOJ has only had one, although you could argue that the enforcement action against Erickson for its violation of its deferred prosecution agreement was a separate enforcement action. Anyways, 3M's conduct here centered on payments for Chinese healthcare officials who were employed by state-owned enterprises. Remember, in China, since 75% of the economy is state-owned, and particularly in healthcare, you're going to run into a lot of public officials because the government controls the healthcare industry. But 3M made payments to Chinese healthcare officials from state-owned enterprises or hospitals or healthcare delivery systems to attend overseas conferences, educational events, and healthcare facility visits. And these were paid for presumably as permissible educational events, but they actually were pretexts to provide overseas travel, sightseeing, and entertainment or tourism activities. What you'll see in this case is how a pretty sophisticated, fraudulent setup here where they scheduled events and scheduled trips, and they would send a compliance, one version of the agenda. And in reality, there was a tourism agenda, which was more designed to promote and influence the Chinese officials. So between 2014 and 2018, a 3M marketing manager in China worked with two China-based travel agencies to provide tourism activities to Chinese healthcare officials during educational events. The 3M marketing manager was assisted in this scheme by several employees in 3M China's sales, marketing, and professional services. The 3M China employees targeted influential Chinese officials and state-owned customers to attend educational events based on travel itineraries that included, and this is the false part, legitimate business training and marketing activities for review by 3M China's compliance personnel. But in fact, 3M China employees working with the Chinese travel agencies arranged alternative itineraries consisting of tourist activities in the same area as the educational events. The 3M China employees circulated the alternative itineraries through hand delivery or personal WeChat accounts. The employees agreed among themselves to keep the agenda hidden and then falsified internal compliance documents that either denied or omitted the tourism activities that were planned as part of the overseas trip. In several instances, the primary purpose of the overseas trip was tourism. As examples, the SEC listed the following scenarios. Tourism activities were scheduled at the same time as the educational event sessions. Educational events were conducted in English, and the Chinese officials did not speak English or have translation services provided to them. And on several occasions, the Chinese officials missed entire days of the educational event or did not attend at all. During the period of 2014 to 2018, 3M China sent Chinese officials on at least 24 overseas educational events 
that included tourism activities. 3M employees accompanied the Chinese officials on the tourism activities. And the tourism activities included guided tours, shopping visits, day trips to nearby sites and other leisure activities. Some examples of the trips included a 2017 trip to St. Paul, Minnesota, Nashville, Tennessee, and Los Angeles, California, a nine-day trip for 11 Chinese officials. The false itinerary included only one day of educational events, while the real itinerary had 10 days of tourist activities. Another example was a 2017 trip to Boston, Massachusetts, and St. Paul, Minnesota, a seven-day trip for 12 Chinese officials, while the false itinerary had educational events scheduled for each day. The real itinerary had primary tourist activities. Another trip, a 2016 trip to Chicago, an eight-day trip for five Chinese officials, including two spouses. One Chinese official and his spouse left Chicago in the evening after the educational event started and returned after the event to attend tourist activities. Another official attended one day of educational events, then left Chicago and never returned. I mean, some of these are incredible. Three other Chinese officials participated in tourism activities every day and did not attend any educational activity. In addition, the three Chinese officials did not attend a dinner that 3M organized for them. One other example, a 2016 Brisbane and Sydney, Australia trip, an eight-day trip for four Chinese officials. The fake 3M agenda had educational activities listed for each non-travel day. The real itinerary scheduled only two half days for educational events, with the bulk of the time scheduled for tourism activities. Some of the Chinese officials did not attend any educational events. Now, to fund this illegal scheme, the 3M China employees colluded with the travel agencies to have them submit inflated invoices for legitimate line item expenses, like travel costs. In other instances, the 3M China employees submitted fake invoices directly to the travel agencies. In other cases, the travel agencies, with the support of the 3M China employees, directed 3M China's distributors to pay for a portion of the non-reimbursable expenses. It got even more sophisticated in the sense of 3M tracked the expenditures and then also monitored what kind of increased revenues were the direct result of these activities. To ensure that the improper tourism activities generated that increased sales of 3M products, the 3M China employees tracked the impact of providing overseas educational events on 3M sales to state-owned customers. One 3M China employee specifically tracked sales after a trip to ensure that 3M China was meeting its sales performance targets. 3M China management requested information concerning return on investment from educational events by comparing sales figures before and after the events. From 2014 to 2017, 3M China paid nearly $1 million to fund at least 24 trips for Chinese officials. The cost of these trips were improperly recorded in 3M's books and records as legitimate business expenses. As a result, 3M improperly benefited by at least $3.5 million in increased sales. Now, 3M China employees arranged for 3M to pay funds to the travel agencies, which were used to offset some of the costs of tourism activities, but they lacked oversight over the use of these funds, and they were distributed at the discretion of the travel agency and the 3M China employees. And they, for example, paid out $254,000 to a travel agency and described that expenditure as quote-unquote marketing. 3M was credited for promptly self-reporting the conduct, cooperation, and remediation efforts. 3M also undertook remedial measures, including discipline and terminating employees, terminating its relationships with the travel agencies, and implemented enhanced controls over its cross-border fund transfers. This case also reminds me of a case several years ago called Johnson Controls, where the local China operation was able to secure funding and engaged in a sort of collusion process by which they sought funds and expenditures for less than $5,000. And they did that because it didn't require corporate approval above just the local level. So they took advantage of that. and. 
that was, again, a situation where you had a group of Chinese employees at Johnson Controls basically colluding to secure money that was then used for bribery purposes. The 3M case is really a sterling example of how you can have a local operation collude and circumvent controls and the need for some kind of auditing or testing of these kinds of expenditures to make sure that they're proper. Could you imagine if during this time period, 2014 to 2018, there was some periodic sampling of some of these expenditures and looking at the documentation for verification purposes? So all in all, an interesting case, but shows you again the risks of gifts and hospitality. And whenever you bring officials to visit the United States, you better make sure it's tightly controlled with regard to educational and product marketing and demonstration events. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week with another episode of Corruption, Crime, and Compliance. If you enjoyed this episode, the best way to support the show is by subscribing on your favorite listening platform. To learn more and connect with Michael Volkov, go to volkovlaw.com. 